Hey, Sal Waterbreaker here. Welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified YouTube channel. And today we're talking about the video requirements that you need to follow if you wanna produce an effective video on Kickstarter. We're covering that today. Hey, Sal again here. And uh, when it comes to producing an effective Kickstarter pitch video, really, when I think of effective, there are a lot of ways in which you can go with that. So you could say like a really highly produced video. You could say something that looks really nice, um, something that looks like it's professional. At the end of the day, I'm a practical guy. I think the only thing that matters is a video that converts, a video that gets people who are strangers that are watching this thing to then become a backer of your Kickstarter campaign. So I have a lot of other videos out there that come to the ideal length, that go into what are the elements of a campaign, like all that kind of stuff. I invite you to dive into this channel, but I kinda wanna go over just some basic requirements that you're going to need to follow if you wanna produce a good pitch, uh, Kickstarter pitch video and how to go about executing on that. If you have a blank sheet of paper, I recommend writing these down almost as like in a checklist fashion. So the first thing you wanna do when it comes to the Kickstarter pitch video is being hyper aware of your resolution. Now, if you're using uh, an iPhone or using most phones nowadays or cameras, you don't need to worry as much about resolution. But every once in a while, I'll see people who make videos with their laptop or I'll see people who are making videos and because of editing reasons, there's some issues with it or because some frames are off. Make sure you have at least a 1080p video. If you want to, you could go even a higher resolution, but make it sure it's at least 1080p. You don't want a 720 um, resolution. It's just gonna look grainy. It's not gonna look as good, not gonna look as professional. Um, and also you don't wanna have an iPhone video that's like if someone's filming um, using their iPhone and it's it's filming this way, it's gonna have two black bars on the side and that doesn't really look very attractive. So you're gonna wanna have a video that's slanted this way so it's horizontal in nature. Um, that's gonna be the first one. The next one is making sure that you have good lighting. Good lighting is most of the deal when it comes to video and online filming. If you have a really good camera, but really bad lighting, it almost doesn't matter that you have a good camera, right? Um, unless you're trying to produce like some kind of a movie effect or something like that. But when there are shadows on your face, if it's difficult to see your eyes, if it's hard to see your facial expressions, if you don't have good lighting, just get in front of a window. I'm in front of a window right now. It's really good lighting. Um, I don't recommend artificial lighting as much. It's a lot harder to get artificial lighting better, you know, right? So just make sure that you're in front of a window or you're in, in a room with really good lighting and you're gonna come across as much more bright, much more lively, much more friendly and approachable versus if you're facing the other way, let's just say the camera is over here behind me, all of the lighting's gonna be behind me. So my face is gonna be in shadow. It's gonna be harder to see my face. It's gonna be a little bit less trustworthy. It's gonna seem not as high prior, uh, production quality. So pay attention to your lighting. The other requirement would be to have multiple angles or to have multiple cuts, which you then paste together in this overall video. So the worst thing you can do, ironically, is this style of video, which is an educational style of video. Um, a product pitch video is very different from an educational style of video. I kind of think of this more as like, you're in my living room or you're, we're um, talking here, and this is more of like a lecture kind of educational style of video. I'm just talking directly to you in a no nonsense fashion. Obviously, I could put in some cool, crazy effects the way that other YouTubers do, but I'd rather just get the content out there to you. It's really bare bones and really just focus on the most important points. So when it comes to this, for you, for a product pitch video, you're gonna wanna have a few different camera angles. And by that I mean, let's just say you're talking to the camera here, well then there's maybe another camera over here that's capturing your side view while you're talking. Maybe when you're talking about the product, you're gonna insert a B-roll footage where it's sort of panning, or your camera is panning around the product and giving a few different angles, or it's, it's looking down at the product and slowly rotating, right? That's what's called B-roll footage. And what you would do is when you're talking, you're saying, oh, this product is amazing because it does this, this, and this. The B-roll footage is then gonna be put over that and you're then gonna be able to be talking and it's gonna be showing and demonstrating the various aspects of the product. That's bare bones, a really easy thing to do. Another thing would be to have multiple scenic backgrounds and have multiple places which you're filming the video. So you maybe do part of the video, let's just say you're doing like a backpack or something like that, part of the video where you're talking and you're in the wilderness, maybe part of the video where you're by your stream, maybe part of the video where you're back home doing the finalizing the pitch, 
change it up. The human brain likes to notice change. So the more that you have different frames that you're inserting, so let's just say every couple, every 10 seconds, you're changing up the frame, you're changing up the background, you're changing up the angles of the camera, it's gonna maintain someone's attention. Um, the reason here is actually you know, based in psychology, where we have a very still frame almost just like this, and this is a still frame, let's just say for 30 minutes at a time, it's gonna get really boring <laughs> over time. And this is why you watch a lecture or something like that, and after an hour, it's like, I can't even pay attention after 20 minutes, honestly. So the more you change up the frame, the more that you change up the um, scenic background, the more you change up angles, it's gonna maintain someone's attention. Here's another thing that you're gonna do when it comes to the requirements. This YouTube video is sponsored by The Gadget Flow. The Gadget Flow reaches over 28 million people and they've been around since 2012. They're Indiegogo and Kickstarter experts. They featured over 5,000 crowdfunding campaigns. If you have a tech or design campaign, it is a great platform to generate awareness and get backers. Check them out at thegadgetflow.com slash submit and list your project today. With the requirements, get to the point. I can't say this strong enough, get to the point. This is a requirement for a Kickstarter video. You don't wanna have a long five minute video where it takes forever to get to the freaking point, man. And by that I mean, the point is, what is the product? What does it do? Who is it for? What are the major benefits? What's the big freaking promise? The big freaking promise maybe is if you purchase a new travel bag, you can throw out all the other ones because there are so many compartments in this one. It's so well organized. You'll never need another travel bag. You can throw out all the old ones that you have in the closet and you'll never have to worry about this again. It has a lifetime guarantee. It's super durable. You'll never have to buy another travel bag. That is a promise. A promise is when you're saying something like you can do X, Y, and Z, or this can accomplish this in your life. Um, and all you got to do is buy the product and you get all these amazing benefits. So get to the point, be succinct. I'm talking like three minutes, 2.5 minutes, be succinct, get to the point. Um, and as a requirement, make sure you always have benefits and a big promise if possible. And in your page, you can talk a little bit more about the functionality, but you can also talk about the functionality a little bit in the video. Cause that's kind of like more logical justifications. Like why is it that it's durable? Oh, it's made out of these materials or it's made with this special manufacturing and sewing process that makes it so that it lasts for 10 years and the bag is not going to break. It actually can hold uh, 200 pounds in this tiny bag or something like that. Right? So you can support the promises and the benefits in your video with functionality, but it's, it's one of those things where you're just gonna kind of like lightly sprinkle those things out there. It's very broad level. You're just doing the uh, job of getting attention, hooking people, getting them excited, getting them interested, wanting them to learn more and browsing through the page then to learn a little bit more. Another requirement is if you are producing a physical product and there, there are a lot of different categories on Kickstarter. So for example, you have tabletop games, you have comic books, um, you have acting, uh, you know, dance, like theater, those kinds of categories, more creative categories. So th there's, it's difficult to cover them all where in one category you can get away with just doing like a voiceover kind of video and maybe even just like a drawing kind of video. In other categories, you cannot get away with that. Um, so I'm just speaking a little bit right now more in the product-based category. But with a product, try to show people using it, number one. Try to show people using it in different environments and try to allow the viewer to almost see themselves in those actors. So like, oh, I could see myself carrying this bag um, right beside me in my Jeep as I'm um, taking a trip all the way to go on this hike in this, this amazing mountain area, right? So you, you can place the bag there. It's almost like telling the story of how this product or how this, this uh, thing is traveling with you throughout your life. So you're going in the Jeep and you're going to the mountains, you sling it along over your shoulder, you're going on a hike with your significant other, you open up the bag, you're eating lunch, it's rainy, but it doesn't matter because it's, it's waterproof. It allows you to maintain everything, you know, in a really easy and nice and uh, way. Like you're trying to tell the story of how you as a person, how this bag fits into your life. And the more that you can do that, the more you can show people using the product in different environments, in different use cases, and your viewer can actually imagine themselves in that same environment or they identify with. They're like, oh yeah, I love going hiking with my snake and other, or I also have a Jeep, you know, and I love going um, and driving to go on this mountain trek or whatever. The more people have those aha moments, the more mentally they're gonna start to imagine themselves owning the bag. And that is the first process to getting someone to buy something online. The final big requirement that um, I list out there in terms of my checklist items with a Kickstarter video, and that's more of an internal one, is, um, when it comes to the medium of video, use the tools that are at your disposal. And uh, when it comes to selling a product, 
you really have to use a lot of those things that are actually embedded in the medium, which is video. So what do I mean by that? I mean, when you have video, you also have a lot of other variables that come with that medium. So like audio, right? You have video when it comes to visual effects. You have video when it comes to color grading. These are all subtle little things that you can use and you have an editor do in order to completely upgrade um, the overall quality of the video. So just having a little bit of music is gonna create emotion. Music equals emotion. If you haven't figured that out yet, I know that sounds like very basic, but I don't always make those connections myself. Music equals emotion. When you have music in a scene, it enhances the feeling of a scene. Just imagine if you were to watch a movie and it didn't have a soundtrack or didn't have sound effects or didn't have music behind it. It wouldn't hit you emotionally in the same way a scene, let's just say um, it's a very dramatic or a sad scene. If there's not that piano music or you can hear the raindrops falling and this really sad scene happens, you're not gonna feel the same way versus if you didn't, if you, you know, the sound was there. So make sure you use the elements of the medium, include sound effects or include music transitions or include background music. Color grading is another big one. A lot of people think you just um, shoot a scene with a camera and that's like the scene, but that's not true. You know, even like Hollywood directors, they'll shoot a scene with a really good camera, but then they give it to an editing team who then color grades the film for adding in more blues or oranges. And color is also associated with emotion. When you see more blues, it's gonna give you much more of a depressed, tragic, kind of like alienated feeling a little bit. When it's warmer tones, you're gonna to feel more vibrant. Just think about the genres of movie. How is a horror movie, the colors in a horror movie on screen different than when it's a comedy movie? Comedy movies are a lot more bright right, like rosy and like orange colors and yellows and those kinds of things. Um, a horror movie is a lot darker, gray, blue tones, like that kind of stuff. And it makes you just feel that way. Um, so music equals emotion, colors equal emotion. And finally, when it comes to functionality, you can use the visual medium as well to do things like call outs, like a little arrow that maybe um, comes in here and shows you, demonstrates one function of the device that it is that you've made. Use the medium that it affords you and use it to the max. And that's really the best way when it comes to um, creating a Kickstarter pitch video. So it kind of went beyond a little bit of the, you know, basic requirements, but I want to give you a few variations, right? So you have a few variations depending on how much effort you want to put into the video. At the very least, you know, we, we covered this in the beginning, like good resolution, good lighting, good audio is another major one. Um, I have some other more longer videos out there that go more in depth into creating a Kickstarter video and how to go about doing that. Also, if you want direct input from me on your page, on your campaign, on your strategy, or even to help you, um, you can book a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me and I will include a link down below to that. I also have a great book out there called the Kickstarter Launch Formula, which is available as a paperback version on Amazon also on Audible, which I'll include a link to down below. I've got a free Kickstarter course. You can go and check out some of the links in the description. Just browse through there. And uh, the ones that pop out, you can go and check out. But thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this helps you and accelerates your progress leading up to your upcoming Kickstarter campaign. would love to hear from you. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Come subscribe if you're new. And I will see you next time.